Rakka uh, Puntesse, CIA. I'm standing here with Lurpis. Um, so, first of all, you're commentating uh, the CSGO tournament. Um, how do you like the setup? It's like a commentator's booth and uh, expert commentator after a match. I think it's pretty cool what they've done here. I haven't really ever seen this before where they have a separate expert thing where they have like a little show after the game. And I think when the playoffs we're also going to do them before every match and possibly even have uh, halftime, at least the map changes. So I think it's pretty cool for the uh, for the viewer. It's also a lot more like traditional sports shows where you usually have post talking in halftime. I think it just adds a lot of value into it, especially with the highlights and everything. So if you tune in, tune in late, you'll still see what's been going on and everything. So I, I think it's definitely a step into the right direction. Um, so uh, you're also here, or here with your brother, our brother's team. Um, I heard you had some comments about their performance last game, and how, how do you think they've performed overall so, so far? Um, it's gonna sound like a broken record to anyone who's been watching the stream, but I think they have a high, high ceiling and a low, uh, low basement. That's what I think they have. So they play really inconsistently. They have a really high top lever that they play on, but then they can also just fall down and play really poorly. And I think that's what we saw in the last two games against Very Games and Absolute Legends, where they were very close to winning. They made a lot of really fundamental mistakes, the kind of stuff that you would think all those players would have ironed out a long time ago. But I guess some of their, a couple of their players ironed that experience in big tournaments, and I think um, I think they really didn't get that kind of individual play in, just uh, from some of the players. Like Alu, I think Alu needs to play a lot better for that team to do well. And uh, yeah, I, I think they just made a lot of big mistakes, both as a team and individually, and their comps weren't that good. But it still it still looks good for the team as long as they get more tournaments under their belt because they uh, they showed a lot of promise. Um, you previously been quite critical of CS:GO and the development. Um, how do you feel right now? How's the game looking? Do you think it has any future for real? I mean, the future is these days determined by completely different things than in the past in esports. Before, you just needed a big fan base and a following, and that would be enough. These days, you need uh, you need the publisher to chime in, and or in this case, we have Logitech, who's willing to sponsor the tournament. So it's a lot harder to find sponsors for tournaments. I'm not I'm not really sure how many viewers we've had in this uh, in the tournament. I haven't really been able to watch it because I've been casting it or watching in the tournament area, but. Um, I don't. I don't think CS:GO is as popular as 1.6, which I can only assume is a huge problem. Maybe they. Maybe they're able to somehow get more sponsors that don't really care about the viewers, but just maybe just point out the fact that it's a new game and it looks it looks pretty, and some people, some executives will be into that or the marketing marketing department. But I. I'm a little worried for the game. I mean, we've seen the numbers. It's it's fairly low. It's under 20 20,000 people playing at any given moment. And I know Valve said that even Source had more players than 1.6. Apparently at ESWC they said that. And that that implies that Source had a, has a lot of players that only play maybe once a week. Cuz I mean, it has way less players than CS 1.6, but 1.6 probably has a player base who that plays almost daily. So I think CSGO, I'm not sure, maybe it has like the thing that would source and it has more casual players. But at the same time, I feel like almost everybody who's playing CSGO now is it's competitive. Like there's a pretty good scene. Like in terms of tournaments, online leagues and everything, we have a lot of stuff popping up left and right. So it just depends on, I think a lot depends on this tournament. I think a lot of tournaments are gonna see how DreamHack goes because they went all in with the uh, $45,000 tourney so depending how this one goes I think a lot of other tourneys are gonna decide if they're gonna push for CSGO or not. Um, speaking of DreamHack, um, you've seen well pretty much all the games right? So um, who looks strong? Who do you think is gonna win? Uh, well, I think NIP is still a level above everybody else. I think uh, the one thing that might surprise people, I don't. I think Very Games has a realistic chance of not placing second in the tournament. I think, I think their stock is falling a little bit. I'm not really sure why. They, uh, I've, I've been told they're still preparing really hard and everything. So I'm not really sure if it's other people catching up or what. But they haven't looked as good as everybody else. So I think NIP is still a level above everybody else. But I think we have real competition for the second place here. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Any last words? Uh, not really, I guess. Check out angeltv.org for, uh, for full coverage of the event. Thank you.